thing, and the same thing is a great little book called Whatever Happened to um, Justice. That might have been in the Penny Candy one. But he said something that was really, really profound. As a matter of fact, I think that this insight that this uh, Robert Mayberry, Richard Mayberry, had has really, really opened up an enormous cavern of things that I didn't really understand before. Give me a big flashlight in there. And that's simply this. He says in this book that we've been told, because it makes sense, that government raises taxes in order to supply services. He said, but that's not true. They supply services in order to raise taxes. And then I thought about it, and I thought, here in California, we have some of the worst roads in the country. We've got the biggest budget in the country, and people in California are retiring at $200,000, $250,000 a year for civil servants for 40 years. So you have to ask yourself, whose vision of government is right? Is it the liberal vision of government where these are you know, patriotic, altruistic people who simply need to raise the resources to provide the value? Or are they a bunch of crooks that are basically stealing from other people because they have the coercive power of the law behind them and um, and don't really give a damn about the people? What's the evidence tell you? In California, the evidence tells you that the roads suck and the, and the pension plans are terrific if you're in politics. That tells me that these people are putting their, they're putting their income ahead of what they're supposed to do, and it really does justify the argument. And believe me, folks, if you think about this just for a little bit, you'll be amazed at how clarifying this is. The government does not raise taxes in order to um, to provide services. They provide services as an excuse for them to raise the taxes. And it's I think it's self-evident because you know, it's, even as conservatives, liberals, all of us, we talk about the government as if it was a giant machine, a giant machine, this, this government thing, and we have to adjust the machine. And when we talk about changing government or making government smaller, we have this vague kind of sense that we can go in there and, and, and you know, turn some things and loosen some things and, and, you know, open some valves and close others, and it will become a more efficient machine. And that's how everybody looks at government, because it's composed of millions of people. But that's the point. Government is not a machine. Government is not a computer program that's been installed by aliens with a giant reptile mouth that we just shovel our money into so that the rain continues to fall. Government is a group of people who are selected for power over other people who, who, who it matters to. It matters that they have power over people. How else can you explain a guy who spends three, four, five, six million dollars running for a job that pays $80,000 a year? It's it's power. It's a, it's a it's a hit, and so he's. You've got an entire group of people who get together and say, if we do this right, we can take as much from the working people, the rich people, the smart people, the hardworking people. We can take a lot from them. We, I bet we could take half. I bet if we did it slowly, we could take half, and they wouldn't do anything about it. And that's that's what it is. It's a it's a. It's a scheme. And if it wasn't that way, then we would have excellent roads in California and people be retiring on $60,000 a year or 40 because we put the roads ahead of the politicians and the, and the uh, public sector employees. But we don't. There's your evidence. And the fact that every society in history, since there's been writing, has all across the world realized that the, the politicians are the lowest of the low. We never really knew why, right? Everybody always says, oh, it's a politician. And there's a vague sense that, that, that the problem with politicians is that they don't keep their word. When you ask people what it is about politicians you don't like, most everybody will say, um, well, they, say, they just say what they want to say. They say what, they, what we want them to say in order to get elected, and once they're elected, they don't live up to their promises. That's not it. That's not why they're, generally speaking, bad people. There are exceptions. Most of they're bad people because they have only one way to power and one way to inc forget power even. If you're a bureaucrat, you have one way to make a living for your family, and that is to maintain and hopefully increase the bureaucracy. And that's why you end up with these insane situations like cost plus um, purchasing of, of F-35s, and which incentivize everything that you don't want, you know, the more expensive it is, the better it is for the people involved with it. The more it the more time it takes, the better it is for the people involved with it. And all of these things are working against common sense. 
we have become so affluent as a people and as a civilization, there is so much wealth around us that we are in fact tolerating not just the fact that they're going to take half of our wealth because the other half is still getting us a pretty nice life, but we're also tolerating the fact that that they're debasing the currency because we don't feel it, we don't see it. They're they're taking they're taking these resources and they are stealing two or three thousand billion dollars a year from the rest of us. It's just unbelievable. It's the biggest racket there is. And that is a large sum of money, which is why I think maybe just to close, if if Donald Trump is able to do one thing to save this country, one thing, achievable thing, uh, if he comes, if he proposes a flat tax that is signed into law, I don't care what the percentage is, I actually don't care what the percentage is because it's not going to be the 45% that I pay right now. The main reason that that would save the country is because if everybody pays a tax, then everybody has skin in the game and they have the same amount of skin in the game. Big guys have a lot of skin, little guys have less skin. But if you pass a flat tax, it's the end of progressivism. It's the end of progressivism. That's why it's called a progressive tax, by the way. They call it a progressive tax because the richer you get, the more you have to pay. And that makes sense to people who don't work, right? It makes sense to people who don't work. It makes sense to people who want to have control over your lives for some reason because they're genetically defective. It makes sense to them. The more he makes, the more we should take. How's that work? Exactly. You can't get away with that kind of larceny unless you... Um, unless you demonize wealth. And they've been doing a great job of that for the last 40, 50 years. Every single movie you see, every time the bad guy's a businessman or it's a corporation, it's a corporation, it's a corporation, it's a corporation, blah, 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 blah. The difference between governments and corporations is this. Corporations are a group of people that get together to accomplish a purpose. A purpose. Governments are a group of people that get together to accomplish a purpose. The corporation achieves money and power by providing services to you, and if you don't like the services, you can leave them and go somewhere else and get better services for less money, and the government has a gun to your head. You don't get to say, I don't want these brushes. When the government shows at your door and says, hey, we've got an incredible sale on these, um, on these uh, hairbrushes here. They're only $60 each. I'm going to put you down for eight of them. You don't get to say, I don't want these. I have no need for them. They look like crappy brushes anyway, and I don't need it. I just go away. You don't get to say that. You've got to buy the brushes. And if you don't, then they'll come and take it. So it's, um, it's a bit of a problem, isn't it? However, with all of that said, this Trump victory is enormous. It's not The enormity of it really doesn't have much to do with Donald Trump. Andrew Breitbart was so correct, and all of us who knew him and all of us who've been doing this for a while understand he's right. The enemy is the media. The enemy is the pop culture. The enemy is the voice of people telling you what to think and what to do. Donald Trump, and I'm, I mean to do a firewall on this or, or several, Donald Trump was elected by Hollywood celebrities and by news people. Every single time they would do a sketch on Saturday Night Live that mocked conservatives or any time they did a sketch talking about how stupid Trump is and how stupid his supporters are, Every time I saw people like Mark Ruffalo getting on camera and telling me to do the right thing and vote for their candidate, I got more and more and more behind this Donald Trump guy. They caused it. It's a rebellion against being told what to do. And if you can change the tax code, that is the biggest rebellion against being told what to do. If everybody's paying a tax, everybody, then who's going to vote for higher taxes? And if the progressives are stuck with the fact that they cannot take from the rich and give to the poor in order to buy their votes, why would you want progressives? If, if there's a flat tax and everybody pays the same, which is the only possible moral um, outcome, because, because if you don't, if you've got a progressive tax, that basically means that you know, you're paying 26% until you make a certain amount of money, and at that point you're suddenly paying 35% or whatever. What happens on that line? What happens at that dollar amount that changes you? Why do they have permission to take your money at $400,000 but not take as much money at 399999 It doesn't make any sense. We just go along with it. A, because it has a certain kind of a feel to it. He's got a lot, so he should give more. He's got a lot because he made a lot. He made a lot, created a lot of wealth. Anyway, it's 
a flat tax would be the would be the end of progressives because there would no longer be people who would be defined as rich when you can draw a line in the sand and basically say at this dollar threshold whatever it is let's say it's four hundred thousand dollars you make less than this you pay this you make more than that you pay this and with wealth being demonized essentially what they're saying is you make less than this amount you're a good person and the government is here to help you you make more than this amount you're an evil person trying to kill the earth and burn our babies alive so which one are you it doesn't happen that way with a flat tax everybody's equal and um and rich people pay a lot more in taxes than poor people this is another thing they don't understand these idiots you know, rich people don't pay income tax, not significant income tax. They don't have income the way we talk about income. They've got investments, they've got capital gains, they've got all this stuff, but they, they don't they don't get a paycheck that you know that, that somebody docks, you know. They're they're very smart and that's why they're rich. Um and I have a company here, I have an LLC and I have all this stuff and I didn't I paid for it. It came out of my money. I'm I'm the guy that wrote the check for all these things, including the chair and the headphones you see here. But in most cases I wrote the check because I could either write the check for the headphones or write the check to the government, one or the other. So it's a tax deduction, and that's why it works. Um, they are done, I think, if you have a flat tax. I just really do think they're done.